Hi friends and welcome to the first class of professional ethics, accountancy of lawyers and bar bench relations. And this is Lokesh Pata with you. So friends, we are going to talk about the, this subject and this is the first class and where we will speak about the historical perspective of this subject. Now here, <clears throat> before we go further, you can see the subject is divided into three parts. The first part is the professional ethics where we will, we will talk about the BCI rules. BCI means Bar Council of India rules, which needs to be followed by the advocates. These rules will have the duties, which is the part of the second part, which is accountancy of lawyers, where they will be accounted, they will be accountable to follow the duties towards the court, towards the clients, towards the opponents, towards the colleagues and all. So that we'll discuss. And then we'll see about the bar bench relationships, like what should be an ideal relationship between the uh, judges and the, and, the, and the advocates and how they will uh, respect each other how they will uh, they have to follow the code of conduct and some case laws on the their their uh, their conduct and professional ethics we'll see about it so as i said in this class we'll talk about the historical perspective which is the first class so let's see what is the historical perspective of this uh, subject so we will start first of all with the what was the practice before the uh, establishment of certain acts and in relation to the professional ethics. So if you see, uh, we can see about uh, the Hindu period separately, the Muslim period separately, and then the British period. So in Hindu period, it is not clear whether the legal profession was actually professed or practiced or not. We can see some legal stipulations from the Atha Veda or uh, Artha Shastra, but we are not sure how it was practiced and who was the one who was authorized to do the uh, to represent the their clients while in muslim system we can find a difference of the term wakils these wakils were the uh, basically these uh, litigants were represented by their wakils and but in this system also the legal profession was unorganized because the wakils they were more like the agents of their principles and they were uh, less working as a lawyers so uh, they were just uh, representing what their uh, client has to say and uh, they were not interpreting that in terms of the law. So it was restricted and the system was also unorganized. Now going to the British period, here also the legal profession was initially not organized, but we will see the breakthrough in this period through a couple of charters and acts. So the first one is Charter of 1726 which was introduced by this charter, the royal courts were introduced in the presidencies of Madras, Calcutta and Bombay in India. And, but it did not make any provision for regulating the legal profession. It was still not regulated. And also there was no provision to train the practitioners with the ideal way of judicial system. Charter of 1753, it continued with the above shortcomings and there was no significant change also. But later in the British period, the Charter of 1774, where the which got influenced with the Regulating Act of 1773 and the Charter of 1774. So here the breakthrough was that the Supreme Courts were established in Calcutta in 1774. And then the concept of attorneys on record was made through this act, which says that all the advocates and attorneys at law has to get approved and enrolled in the rules on the attorney of record. So this is something similar if you see today in India, there are state bar rules, there are, uh, Supreme, there are, there are BCI rules. So this uh, is uh, similar to that concept. So this was a start in 1774 that the attorneys on record was made. Now as per this, uh, but the major drawback there was that Indian barrister or advocates or attorneys were still not allowed to practice. They were still not included in the system. So that was a reflection of the racism happening in our country at that time. Now in 1801, Supreme Court was further established in Madras and in Bombay, it was established in 1823. Now the next breakthrough was Bengal Regulation Act of 1793, which provided for a legal profession of companies court that only Hindus and Muslims were entitled to be enrolled as platters. So now the Indians were taken, but the limitation was only Hindus and Muslims were entitled to be act as a platters. But it was later changed by Legal Practitioners Act of 1840, where it was held that people of any nationality or religion were made eligible to act as a pledders. So this was a good breakthrough. Now in next important step was Indian High Courts Act 1861. This act was the basis of establishment of high courts in each presidency town. 
so this uh, if anybody ask you today that since when the high courts are operating you have to say that it's operated wide 1861 they were established by 1861's indian high courts act crpc was made in 1898 legal practitioners act of 1879 it consolidated and amended laws related to legal practitioners which was scattered before through various charters now in in that section 14 which provided for the procedure of professional misconduct so this is the origin of this subject that section 14 of legal practitioners act 1879 it provided first time the procedure for the charge of a professional misconduct on any legal person indian bar committee of 1923 who was chaired by sir edward chamier they recommended to constitute bar council for each high court remember it was only a recommendation they just recommended to continue bar council for each high court idea of a bar council of india it was not yet conceptualized so indian bar committee act 1923 got, don't get confused with its name it talks about the bar council for each high court and the complete consolidated bar council of india concept for the union it was not yet conceptualized now the next step was indian bar council act 1926 which speaks about the enactment of indian bar council 1926 bar council was established for each high court so with this you can see that the establishment of different acts in a sequence so if this subject comes into your exam or if you are asked about the history of uh, the subject you can speak that uh, you can first refer hindu era you can talk about it it was not structured the same way in the muslim era it was not structured although there were presence of wakils but the complete judicial system was not organized then you can come to british system you can talk about the different uh, uh, acts and charters and uh, through the breakthrough with the with the racistic uh, system to uh, uh, caste based system to finally a proper system which will have supreme courts which has high courts and which have the proper recognition to professional misconduct of lawyers so in the future classes we will talk about the act uh, which is advocate act 1961 and its interpretations towards bar council of india state bar councils duties of advocates and other things we will speak about the bci rules which is again speaks about the duties of advocates and then we will see the bar bench relationship and certain concept relating to the subject So that is all for this class in the next class we'll discuss about the bar council of india thank you have a great day bye